The first view we are going to talk about is the peristernal long axis view. Why is it called the peristernal view? Well, you have seen it already in the introduction. You start scanning at the left side of the sternum. So the mm. sternum is a bone located over here. You start on the left side, you start below the clavicle and just move downwards. Transducer rotated to the right shoulder and then you will get this view of the heart and you can see already some anatomical structures but beforehand to visualize it better also if you just do it after scanning in the software you can make it a bit brighter so you can accelerate the gain so that you really can differentiate the entire uh, organ and always when we start interpreting the personal long axis view we start up here, that's the right ventricle. And the first and a very important information you already get is here the function of the right ventricle. That's the right ventricular wall and you see how it's moving. When it does that, you can already appreciate that right ventricular function, at least in this area, is normal. We see here the interventricular septum. The interventricular septum in this patient, because it's a young, healthy individual, is Thin, so it's no hypertrophy seen in this image. Here you have the cavity of the left ventricle, but you can see sometimes here are the papillary is the papillary muscle. To the papillary muscle, the uh, corda tendine are attached. These are the corda tendine, and they are going to this structure over here. That's the mitral valve. This is the anterior mitral valve leaflet. This is the posterior mitral valve leaflet. This is very important to differentiate. So especially if you have, for example, a prolapse or, or a flay leaflet, you can already see in the peristernal long axis where it is located. We're not done with the anatomy because here we have another cavity. This is the left atrium. So another cavity seen over here. And even here you can appreciate this is a vessel entering the left atrium. So it has to be a pulmonary vein. So even in a peristernal long axis, you already can see the pulmonary veins. To continue, here you have the left ventricular outflow tract, the LVOT, and already here is the aortic valve. Here you have the right coronary cusp, always towards the right ventricle, towards the right heart, there's the right coronary cusp, and here this is the left or the a coronary cusp depending on how, you, how your angle is towards uh, the aortic valve. And up here, there would be the ascending aorta. To summarize this view, in this view, you already get a lot of information about the anatomy. You get a lot of information already about the right ventricle, the left ventricle. Also, you can appreciate left ventricular function over here. So just not the apex, because in this view, you do not want to see the apex unless you choose an atypical view and you also see the posterior wall, the interventricular septum to see if there is LVH. Especially in this view, you should measure the interventricular septum because here, if it's really in a uh, longitudinal position, you can measure it most accurately. And you see two very important valves if they are closing properly, if they are opening properly. In this young, healthy individual, you see how the mitral valve is opening and closing. This, uh, or there is no sign of premature closure of the mitral valve, so this has to be a normal valve. The same goes for the aortic valve over here, so there are no abnormalities in this view seen. If it's too bright for you, you can reduce the gain as well, but if too little gain is there, you don't see anything. I don't see that much now here, so we put a little bit more gain and already we can summarize this view. What you initially want to do uh, in case of examining the heart when you have the B mode image, you want to place the color Doppler on it. For color Doppler, again, we, we use a little bit more gain so that we can see the heart more accurately. We can put the color Doppler box over here, always take a look at the PRF. Normally it's around 0 0.60, 0 0.70 meters per second and it's always or mostly red towards the transducer and blue away from the transducer. In this special case I placed the color Doppler over both valves. This actually in, in a routinely 
daily clinical practice is used very often, but keep in mind this is not that accurate. Overall, you basically shouldn't uh, do that and just place the color Doppler first on the mitral valve to detect any kind of mitral regurgitation or already mitral stenosis and afterwards over the aortic valve to detect stenosis or regurgitation. In this case, you could miss important information, but I'm very well aware that in daily clinical practice, and you see it in this video, I also did it in my practice, it's done frequently. In this case, we basically do not see any kind of severe pathology. Again, this is a young, healthy individual. So this summarizes now the normal anatomical findings of the heart in the parasternal long axis view.